my brother Yaakov open a restaurant under this tree. So we use our house as the kitchen and we start to serve just under the tree. And soon it became winter, we closed like a shed, like a hut. The tree used to climb out of the ceiling and the restaurant was naturally called Eucalyptus. I think that uh, the first vendor of uh, soft drinks, when she came, she took the order from my brother and uh, she said, what is the name of the restaurant? And he was looking at the tree and she said, Eucalyptus. Mm. And he said, why not? And then it became eucalyptus, and I'm actually, uh, I'm very frequently asked, uh, so you're making biblical food, why eucalyptus? So this is why eucalyptus. And in the eucalyptus we are serving this food and these stories, because it's not only the food, and it's not only me. Most of the waiters here will explain to you what is uh, Geres Carmel. Not all the time they know all the story, but they know part of the story, some of them all the story. This is the way that we serve it, cooked. This is the way that we got it, dried and broken. And this is the way that you can get it only in few days or like two weeks in a year. We are keep it, keeping it in this way, freeze, because that's the only way. It's either to dry it, but if I want to show people, and sh so they will understand the biblical story about this, why it's called Carmel, like the mount, and uh, one of the interpreters of the Bible, Onkelus, explaining that it's Carmel, like a full pillow, because the wheat on that in this season are full, and inside it's like a cheese, like a milk. It's written in the Bible, Chelev chiti mas bi'enu, a milk of wheat. I shall um, feed him. When we are serving um, lentil soup, my waiters will come and tell you, oh, you see, this is the red. When you order your steak in my restaurant, and also in most of the restaurants in Jerusalem, they will understand you when you say that you want your steak na. Na is rare, non-cooked. The Ben Ishai saying it's simple. Jacob start to cook his soup. It's written, Vayazed Yaakov Nazid. A sub is coming from the field, thirsty, hungry, angry. He don't want to wait that it will be well done as we served it here. And he say, Hal iteni na, I want it rare. I don't want to, wa to wait that it will be well done. So he wasn't nice, he wasn't polite, and the soup was still red. <laughs> People asking me how I decide, how I got the idea to make biblical food, and I was saying I didn't. But I found myself being introduced to, and vice versa, to the biblical food. And then I start to understand that what I'm doing is biblical food, and then I went to dig deeper and deeper and to find that it's also very wide, all this uh, 
biblical idea and biblical cuisine and it because it's not only food it's much more it's like I think that everything starting here I, it's like my father used to do it salt, bread, and wine. Wine, bread, and salt is also when uh, Abraham is coming from the other countries to this land, and Malkitzedek, that was also a priest, is receiving him with bread and wine. Today, in every Bedouin tent, and it's also a very well-known first uh, or say in, in uh, Arabic, Ish umaleh, bread and salt. This is the um, like if you want to sign on a peace process, you just have to eat bread and salt. And that's all. I brought here something that I'm keeping even that it's not in season. This is wheat that was picked a, when it's still green. Sheep was still green, and it probably will be between Passover and Shavuot, the harvest holiday. And Jewish people till now making a big bonfire and celebrating Lagba Omer. Most of them don't know that originally it goes back, back, back to the days that the mother of wheat that was found here in this area will throw down the seeds when it will be ripe. So if you want to eat the whole thing, you will take the wheat when it's still green and you can eat it. It's okay. If you can, if you want to store it, you cannot, because in this way it will rotten or it will get mold. Or so they use to throw it to a big fire. All the green straw will make a lot of uh, smoke, but will burn. All this hair will burn, and you'll get only the kernel burnt a little bit. You separate the grains like this. and dry them in the sun. And uh, because you can start eat it, you can store it. Because if you burn it on the fire, you can then dry it in the sun and you can keep it even for a long, long, long time. I am assuming that uh, Joseph, when he, was, he needs to um, keep uh, wheat for like 10 years, in, uh, he was using two ideas or patent to, to protect his wheat. Till now, there is two enemies for grains and wheat, mice and bugs. For the mice, he used um, cats that became so holy in Egypt. Against the bugs, the bugs he used uh, this smoke and this system of smoking uh, stores of uh, wheat, uh, rice, is the way that even in modern life today they are using. So he, he was using this old way of burning and by that killing the eggs, getting rid from the bugs. And if I will think a little bit more about this, it will take me much earlier to the early time of human being on this ground starting to try to find food. They are not in the Garden of Eden and they start to sweat for their food. And they will find somewhere here and there this wild wheat. And this cave man will start to eat green wheat. And the scientists will say that this is one of the things that make his mind better and better. 
and this man was speaking the I can see it in my movie in my mouth in my head and one day there is a lightning and all the fields got burned no more wheat that he start to know and to enjoy and he's starting to cry and to shout and but then when the flames are calm he's smelling and there is a good smell and this is maybe the first cooked maybe food or especially wheat that human being is eating and then you can say that he's celebrating every year like the Omer in memorial for this lightning From here, sir. Oh, yeah. You are with me. Okay. And they can, you can be the, over there, everywhere. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll tie it in front. So you can be here if you want, in front, with the right hand. Don't touch it, it's very hot. Okay. Seven wide circles from left to right. Okay. Then make a good wish. Okay. After the wish, hold the handles. They are not hot, but don't touch here. Okay. Lift it slowly up. When it will be like here, turn it to the camera and smile. Okay. And you can be here down if you want. If you want to, to, give, to get a beautiful uh, view. Please. Let's start. Are you ready? Sometimes I can ask them to give you music and then you have to dance. No problem, they must dance. Ah, let's give my, them dance. My knees. <laughs> so. <laughs> so, let's start counting. Okay. Okay, so. Start. Start. One. One. Two. Two. Three. Four. 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 Five. Five. Six. Six. Seven. Seven. Make a good wish. Now slowly up. Join us to a picture. Lonnie, you'll will you take a picture. There and from where are you? Oh, here. It's a Magluba. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Put it back. No, like this. This is the best part. The best there is a name for this, like in I know, like in 17 different languages. The name for this part. From where I came in Iraq, it's called Hakaka, scratching. It's called Bond in Iran, Tadeki or Taadi, both names in uh, uh, Afghanistan. I think it's uh, Benkir, uh, Sukarat in Spain, uh, Kwaban. Do you, do you know it as Kwaban? Do you know the name for this? Kwaban? You are from China? You said that you are from China. Kuoba? Kuoba. He didn't believe that I can say it. <laughs> and OK again, Japanese. And I have to learn some more languages where people are appreciating this. Thank you very much. If someone wants to join us to a picture, I think, please. Um, the word for us would be like biryani. biryani yeah. Yeah. For this, no, I'm talking about the scratch, the bell bounce. So, <laughs> so, you want to join us for picture, please? Please. Come, 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 come Google some. Come.
Come guys. Come inside, come inside. I was born in Iraq, Babylonia. And uh, you know my name, my second name is Basson. This is a seal dated 700 BC. This is old Hebrew. Da'at's letters used to be my secret handwriting as a child. The name here is Le Ovadi. It's mean it's belonged to Ovadi. And this is Basson, my family name. Lenny Wolf, the archaeologist that gave me this picture, it's just a picture that I have. So you know, your family, you think that uh, your family have a a seal, you, the fam your family was not, were not a fam um, sons of kings. But this sign, these heads of pigeons here, this is a sign for prophecy. I was stunned. This is 700 BC, 27 centuries. The first temple was here, 10 minutes walking from here. King Hiskia was building the pool, what is now the Sultan pool, just behind this building, here. So, so from where the origins and So it's from here. And I'm lucky that I have also this um, proof that one day I will, I hope that I will find more uh, rings in this very long chain to understand it. So for me, it's, it's so natural to do what I'm doing after I was doing completely different things. Because when my family came from Iraq, they built, the, the, uh, they bought a bakery, modern bakery, they bought it even from the government, that was uh, abandoned around the independence war, and it was just in part of, in the edges of um, an Arab village that it's now part of Jerusalem that called Bet Safafa. That have till six seven it was half in Jordan, half in Israel. And in this Jewish kosher bakery, and now I found that it's Italian uh, ovens. One from seven ovens that were there in different levels was for the village. So these farmers, Arab farmers, Arab mothers, will come in their high holidays to bake and to cook in this Jewish bakery that became like what's in Arabic uh, called a Furunel Balad, the uh, bakery of the village. And they were cooking these foods in, in this uh, oven. I can see it, I can smell it, and I cannot touch it. It wasn't kosher. I think that by the time one day my father brought uh, Zainab, so bless her soul, she uh, died two years ago. I was in connection with her family till lately to cook for us some of this cook. Uh, food because I think that he noticed that if I'm not going to get it kosher, I will eat it not kosher. And she was doing some of these foods, not everything, with our ingredients in our kitchen. By the years I went to these uh, families to study from them how to use things that my family that came from Iraq didn't use. Uh, things like uh, hisop, a and hisop was the brush of the Israelite when they are leaving Egypt. 
they are using it like a brush to mark the doors with three point with the blood of the lamb and this was the all purpose medicine with the ashes of the red hyper. This was uh, also in daily use in the temple for sprinkling the blood on the altar. And instant of um, the red hyper today, because in Arabic it's called Zatar, they are using sumak with this. And every son of king, because it's written about the people of Israel especially, you are all sons of kings. When he enter the gates of Jerusalem, there will be always a vendor selling bagels with za'atar. And since they are cheating, there is more salt than za'atar inside. So they are receiving you with bread and salt. I'll find later, oh, this is the sumac. That's the way that sumac grows, because you know it from uh, the uh, oriental uh, shops, uh, uh, spice shops, as a powder. Now, it grows like that in all the mountains from Jerusalem till the Golan. If you hold it like this, you'll see that it's coloring your finger. And if you test it, it's very sour. They use it for tenderizing leather in the industrial process, as a food condiment, as, as a cosmetic uh, use also. They use to make from this a blush. The Hebrew name for blushing or for rouge is somek, and we're using the hasmik. And even when you speak about the blood of the grapes, Somek Anavim. Then it went to the Arabic as Sumak, Sumka in the Mishnah, the Aramic name. And in Arabic, we're using the term Sumak for this. It's become also in English. But the only language that are using the root and there is other words and other things, not only this thing is Hebrew. Kodem, I believe that in 10 or 15 minutes, we will be able to do a good job. Normally, from the big garden of God around Jerusalem. I have also my small garden on the roof that I'm growing some herbs because it's not always convenient or available to pick in the mountains. I'm using hyssop. Hyssop now is very protected, the za'atar. So I can take you to a tour in the mountains, something that I'm doing. I'm calling it Shirat Asabim, the, the song of the weed, like the song of uh, Rabbi Nachman B. Breslav, Shirat Asabim. And uh, there is things that I cannot pick from the mountains. I'm growing them here in my garden in very close conditions, like in the wild. Because when I'm buying or you are buying herbs in the market, it will be prob probably watered too much, getting a wonderful conditions. Spices especially don't need a good conditions. As tough you treat them, you get better. It's the only thing that it works like that. Jerusalem sage that I'm stuffing the leaves all the winter. I'm keeping them even 
in my freezer so I can use them a, lit a bit longer. So you know that we are stuffing leaves like vine leaves. This Jerusalem sage is called Moriah because when it blooms it looks like menorah. And it's very rich in omega-3. Today they are producing capsules that call marvelous. Marva is a sage in Hebrew, marvelous. Uh, all the seven species. Uh, I'm keeping most of the time having a little bit barley in my bread. Uh, if not, we will serve you beer, so we'll have the complete seven species. Then wheat, of course. Uh, olive for oil, as it's mentioned in the Bible, we are using here. And sometimes we will serve you in some of our uh, menus. There is a menu called the Queen of Sheba. This is now the top menu. That you'll get a double warning, don't eat more than kazite bread. And we will explain to you what is kazite, that it's a size of a big olive, biblical olive. And that's the old measuring from the Bible. And uh, we will give you, give you some uh, different uh, oils olive oils to test or just olives. In the season we are picking, there is a, originally she's American lady, China, from Mishkenot Shananim, that it's became now a habit that every season she's going and picking olives in the trees of Mishkenot Shananim. It's public trees, nobody's using them, and they will bring them here. So we are pressing them. Uh, we are uh, making a wonderful pesto or a tepanad. And then it's taking me to understand why they are making tepanad in old times. Because today we are taking preserved olives and anchovy and making it. When you get fresh, red, already juicy and just a little bit bitter because when it's ripe, the olive, it's not bitter. And you put just a little bit salt and you eat it and you uh, uh, use a pestle and make like a pesto and add some anchovies. You understand that the best results is from just very fresh olives. You don't have to prepare them first. I served sometimes in the summer soup that is almond and garlic soup. It's called in Andalusia in Spain, ajo blanco, white uh, garlic. It's garlic that fights with the uh, wine vinegar and it all looks like milk inside. And to settle this fight between these two big forces, the garlic, and we are hitting inside some grapes, sweet grapes in this soup. Uh, figs. I'm counting the seven species in between these dishes. Uh, one of our, my famous dishes, I got most of my flying tickets around the world for the stuffed figs. Fig stuffed with chicken breast or in vegetarian style with mushrooms in sweet and sour tamarind sauce. A, then a pomegranate, rimon, that used here all the year. And when do, we don't have seeds, we are using um, a pomegranate syrup, like on our eggplant. We smoked it on charcoal, burnt it really on charcoal or just open flame. Then we peel it and we sprinkle on that tahina and pomegranate syrup. We served here pomegranate juice from pomegranate syrup. A go what we are missing. We are missing the honey in the seven species, that it's not honey, it's a date. So we are using date syrup, so you can understand why date honey. 
we are mixing raw tahina, making like a, a drawing that looks sometimes like a Rorschach test uh, with the silan, that it's dead syrup, and tahina, and you'll eat it with your finger. This is the best way we'll use some bread. And we call it Eretz Zavat Chalva Udvash. Eretz Zavat Chalav Udvash is land of milk and honey. We are changing the Chalav milk to Chalva in this case. So it's really, I don't think that the Eucalyptus restaurant is for everyone. Not for everyone, but I found that most of the people, and it's amazing, people coming through word of mouth sometimes, and now especially it's the big mouth of the internet. And young and very old, very old. A completely different language, it's 70 different languages that really people coming. And I think that it's, maybe it speaks for that. But if I will and I will say that for me, a, see, sometimes it sounds too high and I don't like it, but it's really, I will share with you something that, it's an intimate in a way, but I, I, I already told it in an in interview or there is a beautiful song, Al Kapav Yavi. And it's a song very, in a way it's very sad also. I'm trying to remember who wrote it, it's just out of my mind in this moment. And saying that in Jerusalem there is a carpenter, that the years he's not working. And he's just waiting that the Mashiach will come and he will build for him the chair. And in Yerushalayim, yes, there is a constructor that is not working years and he's waiting to build the Evan Pina for the Mikdash. Even Pina, in English, I think it's the, uh, you don't use cornerstone, but uh, how you say it? Foundation stone. And in a way, I'm waiting that one day when he will come, I will cook for him this dinner with these foods because so when people are entering here, I must say I'm, I'm a business and I'm selling my food and getting money and getting love. I, maybe not uh, my account man will not agree, but love is a wonderful payment. And when I'm getting love from the people that are coming here, some of them telling me that they are giving this love because they are feeling they are, they are getting love with this food. They brought me before this. It's one of our guest books. Here and later on I will give you a... It's clear and clean. With very bad handwriting, this gentleman wrote to the Eucalyptus restaurant or to the Basson family. The Eucalyptus restaurant is not, o not only serving you excellent and original food, they are feeding the eaters with chapters of the Bible. This is my first time, the, the first time that I have the chance to eat the Bible, not only reading it, I find it very tasty. With sweet thanks, Shimon Perez. I 
think that first of all food must be tasty. You cannot sell anything with a concept of food just because of the concept. If it's not tasty. But this huge extra perfume to this food is the Bible. This secret spice that is in all these dishes that in a mysterious way really combining people from all over the world different cultures, different styles, people that are used to very fancy restaurants that are going in all the world. Food is for number one rated restaurant here and there and are coming here and you can read what are their comments and they are really feeling and they are talking about and they are writing about that this food with extra words that my waiters and the staff here is adding about the seven species about Jacob and Isav about I didn't mention before that this green wheat that we went back 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 to the early days of history is also the food that young David carrying in order of his father is take away to his brothers in the battlefield and just by chance or by mistake he's killing Goliath. This is the food. <laughs> <laughs>